What is up, App Nation? Welcome to the weekly Friday live. I got my App Master shirt on that I just printed out. So super excited to have you guys here. I see you guys in the comments. So please let me know where you're from. And here's the theme that I've been sort of top of mind for me is celebrating these small wins. I read this book called Tiny Habits. And one of the things that he was talking about was, you know, you think habits, you know, it's like seven days to build a habit or all these days, but it's not just that. It's actually like it needs a trigger and then you need to actually celebrate it. So he celebrated doing two push-ups after brushing his, after going pee as an example. And he celebrated it. Like it was a huge win. And so what I would love to hear from you guys, instead of the doing like where you're from, I'd love to know where you're from, obviously where you're joining us from, but also what small win or big win are you celebrating? It could be personal business. I'd love to just hear that from you. So leave that in the comments below. I'm gonna give some shout outs today. I've got a phenomenal guest with me on this YouTube live stream. He is the co-founder and CEO at Theorem Reach. Look guys, if you have a mobile game out there, you know, we talked about this in our upcoming virtual summit. So go sign up for that at masters.com slash summit. But if you have a mobile game out there and let's say you have anywhere from 20 to 100 daily active users, that's enough to start figuring out how to monetize. I think too many times we think about growth at a top line level on the download side and not enough on how to actually like optimize our conversions. So he does that, his company does that through reward surveys and we're gonna learn all about that monetization channel as well. We posted a video, a snippet of that interview on the YouTube channels and then we've got a more overview video coming up soon on Monday as well, so check that out. But without further ado, he is once again, the CEO and co-founder of thermreach.com. Check him out, thermreach.com. Without further ado, Tom Hammond. Tom, how's it going, my friend? Yeah, I think we're not getting you right now for some reason, Tom. Let me, all right, thanks, Leandro. I wanna shout out some people while we try to fix this. Tom, let me get you back off of Skype and then get you back on Skype for some reason. You're not coming on through that, through my live stream. I'll call you right back. Thanks, guys, thanks for letting me know. I was trying to mute free, no audio here. All right, keep me posted on what's happening. I'm gonna try to get Tom back on as we do this too. So weird. Okay, you with me, Tom? I am, can you hear me? Yes. All right, guys, let me know if you guys can hear Tom. I'm gonna bring you back in. For some reason on the Skype, it's showing me something different. So, I don't know. Mm, can't hear the dr dramatically different. Uh, voice is too low. Okay, I have no idea what's happening here. That. Are you guys able to see Tom at all? Let me know. All right, well, while I ask that, because there's a delay, I wanna give a shout out to Blue Way. How's it going? Vignek, how's it going, brother? Good to always see you week by week. Blue Way is looking forward to today's broadcast. The broadcast, I'm, I'm as well. Uh, Marco, my friend Marco is here. What's up, Marco? Angelo. Yo, Steve, you'll rob me of Eric's live stream. Sorry, Angelo. Me and Eric gotta ha have to figure out a way to maybe even do one together. Guitar Blast, good to see you once again. All right, let's see what they p are saying. Still not good, voice is low, don't see him. <laughs> okay, I don't know what's going on with this source. Uh... Mm -mm -mm. So they can't see you. Let me hear. Let's try this. Mm -hmm. NDA. I have to turn on NDA in Skype. All right. Well, we'll figure that out. But I think, can you guys see, actually hear Tom though? Tom, say something.
in you guys here, Tom. There. Sometimes it's easier to just chat. All right. Well, we'll figure this all out. Well, let, let me, as I wait for your answers, let me show you guys what's on deck as well for today. We're doing a bunch of YouTube live streams. Look, guys, if you filled out that form, thank you. We've got a long list of people. Today, we've got Quartz Timer. We've got, because Tom's here, I want to focus more on the game side of things. So we got Shield It. We've got this game, this match three. Delicious sweets. Just looks like a clone, but no offense. But yeah, it looks like that. And then Rush Puzzle is another game that we've got as well. All right. No. Okay. Sorry. So it looks like we can't hear you, Tom. Let me figure out a way to do this while we talk about this as well. See, this is why I need a... He sounds like he's far away from like when you hear him. Okay. Maybe, maybe you can fix that audio session. What's the NDA? I wonder if, where's the NDA setting on Skype? I don't know, I don't know. Okay, what about, let me bring you on. Okay, what about now? Can you guys hear Tom? <laughs> you know, you think you have everything set up and Sometimes things go to poop. All right. Well, Tom, I don't want to waste your time. If we can't get this to work from your end, I will have you back again next week, and then maybe we could figure out a way to get this going while I try to do this as well. If you guys got any questions on for Tom or myself from a gaming perspective, you know, this the topic was marketing for game devs, so we would definitely want to get into that. Let us know, but uh, no. It looks like they still can't hear you on this all right well tom let you know you can stay around and i can sort of repeat everything or i can just have you on next week man i apologize i have no idea what's going on this has worked well for the last four weeks but i can do this myself and then maybe we'll have you back next week i guess does that sound all right okay all right, man. I apologize. I'll save some of these games for you. All right. Thanks, Tom. All right. My audio is low too. Okay. Man, what is going on with this YouTube stream? We can't hear, you can't even hear me. That's weird. All right. Let me, let me try to fix this guys. Bear with me. Let me minus him. I haven't changed anything. That's the crazy stuff. What about now? Better? Hello? Uh, all right, let me. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do, guys. Let me. I don't want to end this. Now, what about now? Everything good now? Hi, everybody. Okay. Woo. All right, sorry about that. Thank you for the technical difficulties. Thank you for staying with me. Like I said, we're going to get into those questions for you. All right. You're much louder. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now I'm too loud. Okay, good. Good to know. <laughs> Should we try to get Tom back on? <laughs> I don't know what this NDA setting is. Honestly, man, I don't know what it is. All right. Well, let's get into it. Like I, like I said, I, this is your time is valuable. Let's get into Quartz Timer. Look, guys, when you fill out this form, and I will share my screen with you guys. When you fill out this form, again, at masters.com slash audit, at masters.com slash audit. I've got a long list. So if you want to go to the top of the list, you know, you can either pay for it or you can just wait and bear with me. The, the thing that I would say is put your name because I know Quartz Timer, you put in there and it, I think it's Ka yeah, Ka Kai Noah. So I'm going to call you Kai for short, but his question is ASO rating in general and advice on keywords. Okay. And I will be purchasing App Radar in the upcoming weeks for one month. Well, hopefully you stay longer, Kai, and you get something out of it. But let's let's look at the keywords here. Part, part, Pomodoro timer is your keyword. I like the screenshots. I've said this before. 
I personally don't like it when you go back and up and down, up and down, up and down. So I would try to put these words at the very top just because we don't read like that. And then, you know, I read this great book called story brand, where if you're making your users expend energy on this, where I'm like using my energy to literally go back up, up and down to read your stuff, it makes it harder to do. So just think about it that way. I think to do it as a paid app is really, really difficult. Just FYI. So I, I would probably try to do it at a higher price. You know, there's been studies that we've done. And this was way back in the days when I had a app that was 99 cents, but what we found is 199 versus 99 isn't a huge difference. So if you want to, from a revenue perspective, you actually make more as a 199 app versus a 99 app. While the conversions might be a slightly lower, your revenues will probably be better at 199. And this gives you the flexibility to start thinking through paid acquisition channels. Cause for paid apps, like it's really difficult to get apps ranking for certain keywords, especially if you've got popular apps that are free already that are ranking well for Pomodoro timer. If you got a free app that's ranking really well for it already, then it becomes a big problem. So let's look at that. I'm sure that's your main keyword Pomodoro timer. Yeah, it looks like there's a few apps that are already free. That's what makes it so much difficult here. I'll show you what I'm looking at on my screen as well. So here, I just took, I just did a search for it. You can see I used to use this. I don't use it anymore, but that's got 11,000 views. You get 132. So it's hard for you to outrank these guys, especially since they're free. So one, I would start thinking through, is there a freemium model that you can play around with? Secondly, I shared this last week. Look at this one. This is a 1099 one app. This is why I would focus on this. Here, let's just click on them. Sorry, if you're watching, I apologize. I just cost you something, but this gives you the advantage of, well, I'm not going to pay for this, but essentially being able to run Apple search ads because it is a higher price, right? So think about it that way. If you Kai, I know you got said, you said this, Kai says, I'm working on releasing a free version with ads and a subscription to remove ads. I'm also planning on adding new features. Awesome. I think that's going to really help out then because from a keywords perspective, it's part of the algorithm is using the download velocity. So as a paid app, obviously you don't have the download velocity of a free app. So I actually put your app into app radar as well. Let me do something real quick in the preferences of Ecamm. Cool. There. All right. So I'm going into your keywords and I've tracked a few things. Obviously you want your most prominent keywords in your title and in your subtitle. So it's good. Increase focus, reduce stress. I think I would probably get rid of reduce stress just because I think that's more associated with like meditation, mindfulness apps. I don't think it's associated with productivity. So think about like productivity hacks. And you know, what I like to do is think of things that my core audience would actually be searching for too. So that is like one of we just did an ASO for a client where he has a podcast app and I was looking through like Tim Ferriss, the popular podcast names. Right. And I was thinking Bene Brown, I found that she has really good, decent traffic and low competition. So think through, that's just an example. Like, are there things that your core audience is searching for that is not relevant to just the Pomodoro timer? All right. One thing worth mentioning again, I know a lot of you guys have been following me. The Spanish Mexico localization is what I have pulled up for Kai is indexed by the U S app store. So you want a different app name. You want a different app title. You want a whole set of different keywords in English. It's going to help your U S ranking. Okay. All right. Let's look at quartz. So it looks like you're number 20 for quartz alone for Mondoro timer. Again, look, you're 48. That's going to be hard. Search volume is not even that hard, that high either. So timer is a lot higher. The difficulty isn't so bad. So I think once you become free, that should help you out a lot more. Once yeah, you, once you're free and your download velocity goes up. Cool. I think I well, let's take a look at the app. Watch out. Shall we real quick? Let's get into the app itself. 
don't know if you want my advice on this. Thank you for purchasing. Great technique. Oh, okay, you got sounds too. Okay, that's a cool feature. So I guess as I'm working, I get to hear sounds. Is where I'm at it. Runs from, okay, yep. Great. Now, as you go freemium, Kai, you do definitely do want the pricing page or subscription page right after this. But, okay. Uh, all right, since you're on the live stream, I'll allow it. <laughs> all right, let's tap this. Great. Now it looks good. Everything else looks pretty solid, smooth. And I don't know where I can find the sounds. So that's the only thing I don't know about. What's this? Okay. Maybe it's because, so I don't know where the sounds went, but that's just feedback from you. Tap to pause. Let's see if I pause it. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, you talked about white noise, but I don't know if that was within the app. I thought it was within the app. Maybe it is within the app and I just stopped hearing it that if I turn this volume on, that might be the case. I turned my iPhone volume off for you guys just so you don't hear everything, but that might be what's happening right now in here. But I think it looks good. I'm gonna let it run. Let's see what happens when after 24 minutes, we're still gonna be here. Okay, cool. All right, thanks you. Thank you guys. Let me go back into this. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm glad everything is done and <laughs> right on track. All right. No small wins. Is anybody, I know we had some technical difficulties. Anybody celebrating a win? Please put that into the chat as I'm going through everything. All right, cool. A lot of highs. Leandro, good to see you again. No audio. I know. I'm sorry. Wrote hits here. How you doing? Lisa, this is how people, you know, if you have technical difficulties, the positive thing is people are more engaged. People are going to leave a comment. <laughs> I got a thumbs down. Boo. All right, cool. Yeah, your mute button might be on. Yeah, it is on. Okay, great. Hope that was helpful, Kai. If you got any questions, feel free to follow up or just leave it in the comments below as well. If you guys got questions for me, feel free to leave it in the comments. Let's get into that next app called Shield It. And I will go to my computer screen so you guys can see that. So uh, this Shielded app, let me look at what the question is for Shielded. It's Kingsley, what's happening, my friend? So screenshots and icon, the app is getting impressions, but very little installs. Okay. So the when I looked at this Kingsley, I think the icon looks amazing. It looks really cool. It's got me intrigued on what the, the app is like. So it feels like tennis. Interesting, like very, very interesting. I think with screenshots, the I kind of did some analysis on Voodoo. I just go point to Voodoo because they're running tons of ads and spending mil millions of dollars on stuff. I think a video might help out. So like with gameplay, with games, you know, these app preview videos, they're not always effective for all sorts of apps, but for games, they are pretty effective. So really consider adding a gameplay video within that first one. And it doesn't have to be fancy. If you look at the voodoo stuff, it's just literally you playing the game and a video of that. So I think people want to get a sense of that too. The second thing is if you're getting impressions, sometimes an impression, what I found is it's not the right indicator because sometimes you're ranking. And I don't know how Apple counts an impression. That's what I'm trying to say too, is because sometimes I'm like, well, we have lots of impressions, but we're not getting that many downloads. Like when we do our ASO efforts, we usually see a dramatic increase in, in impressions, but sometimes, you know, let's say we get like 500% increase in impressions, but maybe the downloads are only 50% or hundred percent. You're like, well, that's like a five times difference. You thought the downloads would be a lot higher given the impression count is a lot higher. So I don't know when Apple actually physically counts an impression. Is it when you're in the top three, top 10, I don't know. Is it just when people are scrolling and they see your app? So that's why I wouldn't count the impressions. What I would really look at is from product page view to download. And that should be around the 70 to 80% mark. If you're any, I would probably want to get higher around the 80% mark, but like if you're below 70, then you definitely have a problem with screenshots and app icon and all that stuff. But I think when I'm from what I've seen right here, I think it looks really good. Okay. Again, just the video aspect of it is what I would focus on. Cool. Shall we get into the app?
All right, still my timer. Here is shield it. Made with unity, yes. All right, how to play. Hold and drag to left and right. Okay, that, that was kind of fast for me. So shield shop, let's check, check that out. All right, hold. Okay, so I guess a block. Mm. All right, cool. Boom, boom. I like the tactical. I love this, claim 2x. So here, I'll give you some money. Throw that out. That's really good. As we watch that, I'll answer some questions for you guys as well. All right. Instagram followers. Okay. <laughs> Great name. Do you focus on Google Play? Yeah, so yeah, we do both. I mean, they're all the same. We're doing a lot of analysis on Google Play. Obviously, the, ti the title of Google Play, the bundle ID is really important. So as you guys are building new apps on Google Play, that string, the com dot blah, 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 blah. Make sure you have some certain keywords in that bundle ID. So definitely have that. The short description is important as well. And then the long description. And we're running a lot of different tests on the keyword density of the long description and even the keyword density on the title and short description as well. But yeah, we do focus on both platforms. And Demetrios, didn't we already check out a game of yours, Demetrios? Can you check out my DSL? Like I said, guys, this is the list. It's long. You're seeing this. This is live. So if you want to get on it, like definitely put in the, the website. Here it is at masters.com. I think this is it slash audit. We've got a long list. So I plan on doing this YouTube live stream every week for you, but it is a long list as well. Okay. The ad is over and I've got a question in here. Gilham says, what's up Gilham? All right. Three level completed tap. So I think the, the UI, the gameplay is really nice. I love these type of elements. This is great. This is a great thing for retention mechanism. So daily rewards, these little things. I think that's the thing I would add to is these daily rewards. Awesome. What is this? Oh, I'm, I'm already playing. I didn't even know that. All right. I lost. Okay, cool. Well, that's interesting. I would love to know if you got much from this, the Facebook, YouTube stuff. And then, yeah, looks really good from that. And let's, let's just check. Awesome. All right. Otherwise, I think the gameplay is super solid. Good job. Good job, Kingsley. All right. Let's go to number one. All right. Thanks, Steve. All right. Cool. Got some more question. Gilham. Thank you. We had some difficulties, but we back. We back, guys. We back. All right. Uh, no question. So I got a question from Blue Way. I translate my app in two languages. English and Russian, should I use mixed keywords or focus on single language? So, and Blue Aid, you let me know if this is just Google Play and iOS. I don't think it really matters, but essentially if you're going to put Russian, I'm assuming you have it in Russian for the Google Play Store or the iOS. And I'm, for English, I'm assuming you're using English. So you should focus on localizing. It does help. What I always caution with localization is I've heard from people who've spent millions of, I mean, not millions, thousands of dollars localizing for multiple countries and not seeing a positive impact on downloads or ROI. So be careful. I always go the, the more affordable, AKA Google translate route first. And then if there's some traction, then definitely localize more. And what you can do if you're scared with localization, the downside is if you have a bad translation, AKA Google translate, then you people, you can put off a lot of users as well. And so if you want to take localization in a very slow pace, then put the localization, the keywords in the, for, especially for iOS, you put it in the keywords field and maybe you leave English in the title and subtitle, but the keywords fields are all localized to Russian, Italian, French, wherever you want to do it at. Cause then that way you can certain, certainly hide the keywords you're going after and still have a bad translation. Hope that makes sense for Google play side. You can't hide anything. So unfortunately I would try to do it slowly, but w one thing to do also is maybe just find somebody that speaks that language and then ask them like, Hey, what's the right way to say this X, Y, and Z. And that's a more affordable way to get it translated. So Upwork, you know, 
Fiverr, Gengo is a, one of the websites that people have recommended as more of an affordable so solution. So think about through that way too. What I also do is I have a hack for you guys and I'll share it in a later video, but if you use Apple search ads and you put in, let's say Russian, for example, and you put one of the top competitors in there that has a lot of keyword volume and Apple search ads will give you the keywords to actually start figuring out what keywords you should target. And you can see the actual like search volume for those keywords. So that's another video that's coming soon. So stay tuned. All right. Hope that answers your question. Let me know blue way. All right. So Sri asks, changing developer name, will it improve my app store rankings? Yes. I think the, the developer name is indexed by the app stores. So depending on how competitive that developer name is, it may help you a lot or it might not do that much. So I don't think from a ranking perspective, it's like super high priority, like the, the app name, the bundle ID, those are important. It's important, like the app title, the download velocity, all those are more important than like the bundle name, the developer ID. These are just nice to have. Early in the days, it had a lot of weight because that's why you saw like fun games, LLC a lot, but not these days. I think it's part of the algorithm, not super high up on the algorithm, but it gives you an edge, right? So I think if you want that edge, then go for it. It doesn't hurt. Let's say that way. Uh, all right. Uh. Vivek asks, any good idea for, you have any good idea for ed tech? I have a lot of good ideas, <laughs> Vivek, but if you have any specific questions, I'm happy to get into that as well. All right, cool, Vivek, great. All right, got some more questions. Cool, keep those questions coming along and then let's hit the next app that we have in store. Let me go to this. All right, delicious, we've got delicious, delicious. Store presence, so Dimitrar, Dimitar, Dimitar, I guess. Store presence and ASO for this. Okay. Delicious sweet smash, match three, candy puzzle. Match and crush the delicious sweets. Crazy fun ca candy and cooking matching smash. So I think the title is done well. This is hard to do for me because essentially this is a match three, you know, candy crush, bejewel type of game. I think with these type of games, it's, you know, it's interesting. All right, here, I'm going to use this as a, as a way to go give you guys an example of a client that we had that I thought did a tr really great job. And it was called, let me see if they're on here because from an app store presence, like, I just feel like you're, it's pretty much similar to what you've done. Okay. Yeah. No, they're not doing it through team point publishers, but here's one of our former clients, food truck chef. I think this is a great app. And the way I would do this is very similar to what you're asking Demetar is you've got the gameplay is very similar to everything we've seen, right? It's a match three game, very popular in terms of the category. You got a great, these guys, what they did well is they found a niche that was related to dining. So this is like any diner dash type of game that you've seen, right? So the gameplay is very similar, but they found the right audience food truck to go after. And what if you've done ASO, if you've done, if you look at keyword research, you, you can find that well, food truck actually has decent traffic and very low competition. And so it's about with these gameplays, it's great, right? When you think about gameplays, match three, these type of games, they're very high retention, very good users. So you've got something, the gameplay is solid, nothing you can do there, but the key to figuring out, especially if you don't have a huge amount of budget is to find the right category, the right niche that you can then target, not just candy because there's already candy crush, right? Like why go after this? So it might be cupcakes. It might be donuts. Think it through the different ideas that you might have and the different niches. Jelly beans. I don't know what it is, right? But I think that's how I would start thinking about a match three game. I think the gameplay is solid. So you got something there. Just think about what sort of niche that you can go after. And these seem to be very competitive titles, names that I'm like, oh, well, you're just going after another candy crush than trying to come up with your own niche that you can then dominate. So do a lot of keyword research. The, the gameplay is going to be solid and similar. The graphics are going to be similar that you're going to have to change up. And so that's interesting. That's all easy for you. But then next would be what 
other thing category are women, because that's more of the matchery audience interested in. And the keyword volume is there that I'm not competing with the candy crushes of the world, the candy vills of the world, all these other ones. Right. And I had a conversation with, I think it was, oh, Luis, it was part of our virtual summit where we talked about this, like the meta gameplay is solid, like gardenscapes. Great example too. match three. I didn't even know this. It's a solid match three game, but what they added on top of that was this whole building your own garden aspect. So think about that from an ASO perspective, but there's not much I can analyze here. I think everything looks great, right? Your keywords are pretty solid. I just think you're going after a very competitive category. That's all and very competitive keywords. Your screenshots are solid. Everything is solid. I have nothing, no feedback on there for the you, but other than what I just said, figure out the right category. Cool. Hope that was helpful. Let me guys, let me know what you guys think. Okay. Uh, oh, look at this. Rohit asked Theorem Reach, got a new partner. Me spoke to them on a call. It was great. Got a demo and we'll be adding their SDK, SDK in the app. All thanks to Steve. Awesome, man. Congratulations. That's great. Let me know how it goes, Rohit. Maybe we can get you on to the podcast and talk about your experience and what you've been able to do with revenues as well. Okay. Uh, Greg said, looking forward to that later video. I will share that with you. I was just testing that with the client on a call and I was like, Hey, this search ads, cause we wanted to localize this app. I was like, I think I can use search ads. I'm cheap. Right. And so I was like, can I figure out a hack? So I'll be showing that with you too. Okay. Let me answer some of these questions. I released my app on Apple two months ago. I gave, I get around 10,000 keyword installs. Oh, okay. But when will my app start ranking? Okay. I see. That's what you're saying. Aditya. So you, you're saying that you gave, so essentially you bought 10, around 10,000 keyword installs. If they're in the U S you normally, when you buy that much volume, especially if you buy it in a short period of time, you will see an impact right away. Now, the unfortunate side is this was a campaign that we ran very much a lot in 2017. And now they're 2020, it doesn't always work as well. So what we found, if you're doing these keyword install campaigns is to focus not in the U S but other countries. And we found better success in other countries rather than focusing purely on the U S app stores, but you should have seen an impact already. If you haven't, fortunately it just didn't work out for you. That's what we've seen too. Sometimes it doesn't work out. So we drove a thousand, 2000 for a few clients. We haven't seen the amount of impact that we saw back when we used to run it a lot. So we just don't offer it anymore. When people come to us, I talk about it just so you know, that I know what I'm talking about, but in the grand scheme of things, it stopped working. There's a lot of these campaigns that used to work a lot that doesn't work, that don't work at, at as well anymore. All right. Pivot great. So blue way asks my, just to follow up my, my apps are on app store. I, I was always confused about using localized keywords or mixed with English and localized keywords. Thank you for the answer. You're welcome. My friend. All right. All right. Shreef had a follow up. I launched, I'm going to consider an app on play store. It ranked in the fifth place after changing the developer name, my make my invisible in the whole list. So I changed developer back, back right now. Okay, good. See, she knows good. So which essentially she is saying the developer name really helped her because she changed her develop name, lost rank, changed it back to her old developer name and got back rank. Good, good job. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, cool. Again, you know, Instagram followers, <laughs> would you mind checking that? I think you said your app, look, I think if you want an app audit, just go to this website. That's all I can say. And we, like I said, we have a long list. Okay, cool. Got some more questions. So I'll get to you guitar blast. Let's check out our next app. Boom. Here we go. So we've got rush puzzle and I'm very looking forward to looking at this and let's see what he had in mind. You direct says, uh, rush, so rush puzzle supports game center with achievements and scores also have multiple in-app purchases. Plus we have iMessage app. We have low down download ratio, like 0.3%. What should we do to increase the download ratio? Okay, great. 
that's what I'm good at, Rush Puzzle. All right, this is the type of question that the title is all about. So Rush Puzzle, what can you do to increase downloads? Pretty simple. Let's get into this game a little bit and I'll give you some examples of what we can do. So I think from an ASO perspective, with these type of like casual games, I think I'm assuming this is a casual game. So it looks like it's a colorful mind and speed puzzle with emoji and icons. Okay, so it looks like a puzzle. So like brain teasers, all these type of things are probably keywords that you wanna go after. So think about that as adding this to your keyword list. Like I said, when I think about these type of things, think about because you know brain teasers, daily puzzles, puzzles in general, really highly competitive keywords. Think about terms like like SAT or, you know, that speaks to your core audience that are brainiacs that want to learn. So NASA, you know, robotics, those type of terms. Start thinking through them because you might find some that are high, that have decent traffic and a very low competition. And what you can always do is bid on those terms. If you find a term using app radar and you're like, wow, this has a lot of traffic, but very little competition, you might be able to try to just bid on it. You're like, Steve, I don't trust you. I don't believe you. Okay. Well bid on him on doing Apple search ads and see if it converts. And we found clients that are like, Steve, I didn't believe that this keyword would convert but we bid on that exact match and it actually converted for our app. So that's what I would do. That's how you sort of think outside of the box. With ASO, I found that like everybody knows a lot of the different stuff. Everybody's going after the, a lot of the same keywords. And so you have to be very creative when it comes to ASO with those keywords. So I always think, who's my core demographic and what are they gonna be searching for? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, see, this is why I like having a guest so I can stop talking once in a while. You probably don't wanna hear me talk all the time either. All right. Here is Rush. Let's get into the game itself. So look at that. People are liking your app. Helium asks, Rush Puzzle looks great. Go Rush Puzzle. I think it's part of the same company. All right, let's play. You have only 30 seconds to find them all. All right, let's go. Okay, I gotta find, I guess I gotta find these things. Okay, help me guys. Just yell it. Just leave a comment. Go. I forgot what I was looking for but I think I was looking for a banana, uh, a cherry, if I remember correctly. I don't remember what else though. Orange, let's see, strawberry, pick some. There's just a bunch of fruit. Is that watermelon? I think that was it. Okay. Aha, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Okay, play, well done. So here's where I think that you can try to monetize for as well. It's like, I did something great. Like, what did I win? I don't know, but you know, you've seen these in other apps where you're like, great, you got 500 coins. Like now do you want to double those 500 coins? Watch a video, right? Or fill out a rewarded survey. So think about ways that you can monetize with after the windscreen. It's a great little stop point for most people. All right. So it looks like a lot of fruit again. Now, one of my favorite campaigns, I'm gonna go to your shop real quick. Okay, here it is. These in-app purchases, they all look like non-consumables, right? I buy once, like buy new icons, I get it forever. The thing that you can do is make this remove ads in-app purchase for free for a couple of days, okay? And then pitch a website called App Advice. I'm gonna pull them up real quick as I'm going through some of this stuff. But you pitch them and you say, hey, I'm gonna, Tyler is the guy, I'm gonna make this remove ads in app purchase for free for a couple of days. Would you please cover it on your website? And what he's gonna do is put you on this list, right? He's a, it's funny, like I still see a lot of my former clients using this. This is one of my former clients, these guys, and they're still using this, see? They love this. Because what you can then do, if you get coverage, you can drive for games, and especially because Rush Puzzle looks so, looks so good, you can drive tens of, like, I would say close to 10,000, anywhere from six to 10,000 downloads within a couple of days. And it's that simple. And the cool thing that you're gonna see as well is people are gonna buy the other things. People are actually gonna buy the new icons or the buy all levels, or they might just unlock the all pro. So you're actually gonna get make more money off this campaign as well. It's a great campaign. You can run it every other month. Go pitch them. It's app advice. Here's the website. And then if you scroll all the way down, it's called apps gone free. You can see Tyler's name on there as well. Like, Hey, here's what you do. 
So there's instructions at the very bottom. They won't let me get to it because it keeps going. But here at the very bottom, they'll tell you exactly how to pitch them. Okay. So it's a great way to do it. All right. The game itself, the game itself looks very, very solid though. All right. Go back. All right. Let's try one more level. Shall we? Mine's one. Looks like a lot of fruit. I'm going to remember it. There's seven. Let's go. Or there's eight. Maybe there's eight by eight. See one already. Two, three, four, two. Huh. Is there another one? Is there a ladybug? <laughs> oh, here you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Again, I think you can show some ads, but maybe. If I fail, you know, let it continue. Let's see what this is. Yeah, I think we can better optimize this from a, from a monetization standpoint. Like what I like about, and you, you know, this is true. I've talk, spoken to a lot of game developers about this. People want to customize, people want more characters. And so, and maybe it's the new icons too, that people want, like maybe switching up the theme. So think through that and how you can better monetize. I like the game a lot. And I think the monetization part of it is the thing that I would try to fix because by having a little bit of virtual currency, you're able to then give me coins for finishing a level and also like make me, make me be able to double those coins that I won because I finished that level by watching a video. And with game developers, you know, I think the, the monetization is you try to monetize off of impatience. So you see these games where they give you stamina. So as you play each round, your stamina goes down. If you want more stamina, you got to buy. So you can only play like four rounds. And then if you want to play more, well, you got to buy or wait. So think about how you can, that theme of monetizing on impatience. That's how I would start thinking about this because I think you got a great game. I just would start thinking about how I can make it better. So definitely run that, what I am calling switched it from pay to free to free promotional campaign. You have to, you, you have to make the remove ads in app purchase for free. Okay. You can do that all within your app store connect. You don't need a developer. If you're a developer, great, but you can do that so that it becomes when I, even I, when I click this, it just becomes free. You don't even have to change it to free, you know, just for two days. That's all you have to do and go pitch app advice. Let's go. All right, let's get some questions here going. All right, Guitar Blast. My sales dropped after changing in-app model from signal payment to auto renewable subscriptions. Do you have any suggestions to increase the subscriptions for auto renewable model? Yes, Guitar Blast. So I think we did this app audit and we kind of recommended this for you. Well, guess what I'm gonna be doing? Appmasters.com, look, I'm gonna try to position it perfectly. No, at, okay, forget it. At masters.com slash summit, I'm going to be covering the five key components of a really high converting pricing page. I've got some great hacks in there where we help the client increase conversion by 70%. So if you want early access, you can buy the all access pass and you can see it. But my interview is going to be the last interview on there. We're recording it today. I'm going to give you the examples of what makes a really high converting pricing page. So think about that too. And then also think about the flow. Like, are you showing the pricing page aggressively and what are you showing at the right, are you showing at the right spots? So really think about that as well, but I'll get into that. And if you want to do a premium app audit, we can do that as well, but I'll give you some of those secrets during the app masters virtual summit. So go sign up for that right now. All right. Maybe after this live stream, is there any way to get access to censor our full version, like group buying thing where people group of people can pay and share Adidia? I don't know. Maybe you should start a service like that, like app sumo for apps, but look app radar, very, very affordable. I would check them out. They are a sponsor of the show, but I don't, I pay for it too. So I actually switched over from central tower to app radar because I found that the, the data that they're providing is just as accurate. And they're a lot more affordable. So definitely check out AppRadar. They got some free plans. It's only $29, man. I think you can pay the $29. Okay. Leandro, what's happening, my friend? Steve, do you think it's worth investing in alternative app stores like, I don't even know how to say that one, Samsung and Amazon? You know, 
I think you're going to get most of the downloads from Google play and iOS. It depends on the investment. I think if you can easily do it, do it. I don't, it doesn't hurt. Like there's people that have done it and they do fairly well. I just think most of the revenue is going to come from this store, the Google play and iOS. So if the investment is small, maybe you see some opening that you're not seeing anywhere else, then great. Try it. If, if the investment is small, it's not going to kill you. So I would say go for it. That won't hurt you, but as long as it's not super expensive, like am I going to spend $10,000 on Google play and try to like, I mean, Amazon and try to really get it up there. Probably not. But if it's like easy, I could just submit it, put it up there, then I'll do it. Do, 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 do. Shri said, uh, I don't know what you were saying before Shri, but here's what you're saying. Add mobile. Maybe it was during the, the app audits. Okay. Greg says, I sent an email to Tyler, but my app wasn't covered. How far in advance should I inform him? So I, cause I know Tyler very well. I tell him the day before he does get a lot of emails, Greg. So just be mindful of that. I would try to tell him at least a day before, if you can, if not a couple of days before a follow up. I've had clients who like, I pitched him, he didn't cover it. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to tell you, but I have a good relationship with him that, you know, he covers my, all my clients apps a hundred percent of the time, but you know, reach out to him. I think give him a week's advance. Like, I don't know, but there's obviously, as I've shown you guys, there's clients that have this one client, you know, we taught him this campaign. He's always on here. Like every time I look, he's on here. So these guys, like he's been able to do it. So don't give up. He gets a lot of emails. Don't give up, follow up. I think a lot of PR, a lot of PR is just persistence too. So keep at it, my friend. Okay. Click three wrong icons. Hey, Ian's here. All right. Hey Steve, do you have any tips for changing an app from paid to free plus in app without annoying existing users? Yes. So there's been a lot of people who did this. So I'm assuming you have a paid app, you're going free, you have in-app purchases. Rich, who is in our app masters, elite mastermind. He said, look, you have these IDs of people who paid. So if you've already paid, you can sort of grandfather them in if they've done that. So that's the best way of doing it. I think it's a technical thing, but rich can better answer that. But I asked him that same very question and he said, that's how you can do it. Cause even if you go from in-app model to, to subscription, you can see who's bought your apps and then give them like, okay, these develop these, I guess their developer IDs or whatever IDs are then grandfathered into this new way of monetizing. All right. Oh, okay. Shree's giving feedback. Rush, remove the banner ad and add interstitial. Yeah, I would do that too. So Shree suggests remove the banner ad and add interstitial ad or video ad when you die. All right. Cool, 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 cool. So Instagram followers ask, Google play doesn't support creating a Google merchant account in my country. Would you mind providing me with alternatives? Thank you. I think there's ways around it, man. Like whether it's signing up in a different country, I don't know how to do it exactly. So I apologize. Just, I just haven't come across this problem, but I think, you know, there's ways around it. Like, I think if somebody in your country has a Google, has an app in Google play, then there's a way I love Gary V's quote. It's like, if somebody before you had in your same boat that has done it before, there's no excuse for you. So there's probably a will when there's a will, there's probably a way. All right. Okay. Yeah. Ian says he's Ian's in the at masters elite as well. Thanks mate. Just what I was looking for. I'll hit up rich. Rich is the guy to talk about with this. Cool guys. I think we don't have to go any further. If you guys got any questions, please let me know. We've got about 10, nine minutes left. I don't want to take up any more of your time. I mean, I've been joining these app audits. And so I only had four on the dock because I thought Tom was going to talk about this a little bit more. Maybe we can get to Craig a little bit. Yeah. Let's try to get to Craig. All right. Craig, he hit me up on Instagram that you guys can check me out there as well. Oops. Let me share my computer. He said, you know, like Steve, I've got this email pitch. Maybe I can pull up Craig's thing on Instagram as well, but here's Craig's app as I try to pull it up. You guys can follow me at Steve P young on Instagram. So here's Craig's app and he's been trying to reach out to bloggers and Craig, I don't think you'll mind if I just share your message to me on the IG DMS. 
but and we can sort of audit what he was saying to developers. All right, here we go. Let's do it. So this will be the last app audit. If you got questions, let them know, put them in there, and then I will answer them as well, and I'll get to Craig's question. So he's like, hey, I've got a pitch. I'm emailing bloggers. And he's got App Store presence. I'm emailing bloggers. Can you help it? So the, I'll take a quick look at this. Like I guess, like I said about all paid apps, really hard, but he seems to be doing well with 130 ratings. Song creator. What you can also try, Craig, is making this free for a couple of days, just like this app advice campaign. It's easier because your app is actually paid. So you're literally going free for a couple of days and then just make it paid once again and jump it to 199. What you're going to see is you're going to hack the top charts, the paid charts, and then you'll make an extra cool revenue after the campaign is over. So you make it, you know, one of our clients, we did 33,000 downloads. He had like a $12 app, 33,000 downloads just in a day, we made it free the next day. And we did a thousand dollars in revenue the next very next day. So pretty cool idea. If you got a paid app and you go free, you'll spike the charts and then you'll actually make some money for people just buying the app as well. Okay. The app store presence. Look, I think it looks great. <clears throat> I would AB test portrait mode rather than landscape because with portrait, you can see three different ones. I don't like the, the text a lot. Maybe the font, maybe you're trying to go after kids and it looks like you are. So maybe that's just what kids are seeing. And that seems interesting, but like, I would try to play around with this. I think personally, like what you've put in here, designed by music teachers and early childhood educators, I would put that into the screenshots. That's why I rather do portrait mode so I can fit in three within the search results and then highlight some of the things that you have in your description. I see this over and over again, where app developers have so many great things, so many great positive like benefits of the app in the description, which nobody reads but yet their screenshots are just like, meh. And I think this is, this is part of it. Like the screenshots are meh, I get it. But designed by music teachers, that's interesting, right? This is probably want your all in one music studio for kids. Like why not have those, these words that you're already using in here up here rather than explore studio Island. I don't know what that means. I think learn about instruments is cool. Create your own song sing along. These are all cool. These are things that I would probably move up and it's okay if your app is in landscape mode, but yet your screenshots are in portrait mode. You can make it work from a design perspective. Love the app icon. I think I would play around with having a flat icon too, but for the most part, I really like this. This is really cool. Kids love faces. I love the mic, but maybe this 3d thing that you have this 3d border. This was very like 2000. I don't remember the year, but right now things are moving to more of a flat design kind of like this, kind of like the, you know, these are cool designs. So, I mean, I'm just being nitpicky here. I like the, the icon. Okay. <laughs> I feel like one of those, you know, food, sh food judges where like nitpicking every little, small, little detail. Okay. Let's get into Craig's DM to me right here. All right. So here's this email. Hello friend, bad opener. If you're doing hello friend to anybody, you don't even say hello friend to your friends. So don't say it to somebody you really don't know. All right. So don't do that. Bad email. Okay. So, Hey Steve, I'm a big fan. I was wondering if you take a look at the email I am using to submit my app to bloggers. All right. So horrible. Don't open this. All right, Craig. Next I'm excited to submit uh, again. You're making this all about you right now. Like if I'm just looking at it, super long. You're making this all about you. How I like to do this is try to find a little bit about the person. So if you're just submitting this and mass submitting it, fine, but your hit rate is probably going to be low. What I like to do is really think through kind of like what you did with me. I'm a big fan. You showed up on my live streams. I know a little bit about you. So I'm more open to helping you, you know, a little bit. So you've engaged me. There's a little bit of rapport, build a little bit of rapport. So whoever you're reaching out to and being like, you know, one of the sneaky things that we did to an app store manager was I found her on Facebook. I actually found the names of her kids. She doesn't have them anywhere, but I found it because I saw a picture and then somebody commented and be like, you know, Ella, Elsa and Anna are so cute, but those aren't the right names, obviously. But so I said, Hey, you know, Craig, your daughters are Elsa is going to love this app. 
Anna's going to enjoy. Elsa and Anna can sing along together with this app. Now you're like doing a little bit of rapport at the same time and going to the app. So make it more about the person because how many emails do we all get like this? I'm excited to submit our app again. Why do I care? So the other thing that you can do if you don't want to take, take the time to build a rapport is lead with social proof. So hi, Steve, you know, what's, what's the app called? Studio Island was designed by music teachers and early childhood educators from Duke university, whatever, right? Like, so I'm leading with social proof, right? And we allow you to go blah, 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 blah. Now I also think about it like a resume. You think about a email pitch to bloggers. You think about a resume, have bullet points. So I usually intro it with something cook that people are interested in, hook them in that first line, and then give them the features and bullets and keep it a lot shorter than this. We can scan things in bullet points, but we can't when you're sort of just have this long, it feels like I'm reading a book. Right. And then maybe the fact that you're an educate director of education. Cool. Great. But maybe that's in the PS another, which way. So that's how I start framing. If you look at my, our email pitches is usually hook them with the first couple of sentences, give bullet points on some of the key features. And those bullet points are very, very short and then end it with what you want. So like, Hey, you know, would love it. it would mean the world to me. If you can write, if I can get you a take on this app, or how I can prove this app. I think your audience would really love it. Blah, 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 blah. And then follow up, man. Sometimes you got to follow up. If they opened it, you know, I, I shared this tool in the past called banana tag, but any email tracking program out there. So if you can see they opened it, then you can follow up and be like, Hey, Craig, just wanted to follow up with you. Let me know. I'm happy to provide you with some promo code or it's promo code to your audience as well. All right. Hope that was helpful, Craig. All right. So let me bring it back. Hopefully you guys can't hear my dog barking. All right. True dreams. What's happening, my friend? Good to see you. Greg, Gary V. All right, cool. I've got some questions here. Hope that was helpful, Craig. Vincent was, I was wondering what's a good conversion rate to aim for when it comes to subscriptions from installs to free trial and then to paid users. I think anywhere from 10 to 15 is what I would be trying to go for from install to subscriber. All right. Cool. True dreams. I'm late today. Sorry, brother. I'm glad you're here though. All right, Craig. Oh, okay. Good. I'm glad Craig. Hope that was helpful. Craig. I know you're a little bit delayed, but let me know if you're helpful. Okay. One to do, 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 do four more. Okay. Let's last couple of questions and then thanks for joining. We'll see you guys next week. Okay. Google play versus iOS. What do you prefer more? I prefer iOS just because you can make more money on iOS. That's frankly it, you know, from a subscription perspective, I think most apps are going to subscription mode and iOS is perfect for that. Blue way. Can you please look at the fourth application? Blah, 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 blah. He's on the list. If he's on the list. I'll get to it next week. I promise. I apologize. You guys saw the list. It's a long list. So I'll get to it when I can probably get to it as well. All right, guys, that's it. I apologize for the technical difficulties early on. Tom will get back on. I'll fix all these issues that I had with Skype. We are hosting an app masters virtual summit very shortly. It's happening June 8th. We've got all the videos recorded. So if you want early access, you can purchase the all access pass, but you can watch all these videos for free. The day they go live, go sign up for your free pass at masters.com slash summit. We've got some amazing speakers, Darius, who's going to talk all about influencer marketing. I'm going to talk about how to really put a high converting pricing page. We've done a lot of analysis on this pricing page, and I want to share some of the things that have worked for you, including some really cool tricks, this little simple tweak that we did that increased conversions by 70% and revenue per download by 46% for one of our clients It's so sneak and simple. You're going to be like, wow, that's so simple. And hopefully you'll think so brilliant because I'm brilliant. All right, guys, thank you guys for coming trade plan. Hi, Steve, Shaquille here. Love what you're doing. Thank you, brother. Thank you for coming out. And then Craig, thank you so much, Steve. Great tips. Definitely will use. Hope that was useful, Craig. If you get, if you get any press, you know, let me know. I want to know. All right. I think everybody else. So let me go through this list real quick. Thank you guys, honestly, for coming on. I do appreciate every single person that shows up to these YouTube live streams. We'll get Tom back on next week fix all those issues, and then we'll do more 
analysis. So if you got games, know that the games I'll high pro higher, I'll prioritize them higher on the list next week. And I hope to see you guys next week. If you need that URL, every YouTube live stream is going to be redirected every single week on appmasters.com slash live. So 9am Friday, next Friday, I'll see you guys there. Thank you guys for joining and I'll see you next week. Or really, if you're on the YouTubes, I'll see you on Monday when we have that new video up. And then Wednesday, I'll tell you guys next week, we've got a app audit of an app that's making $300,000 for intermittent fasting, which I am doing right now. So I'm super hungry, but it's a really great app. And I break down some of those key components of a high converting pricing page and where I think pricing pages are going to be transitioning into in the future. So check that out. That's going to come out on Wednesday. And then on Monday, we've got another video for you guys as well. All right, guys, till next time, next week, I'll see ya. Bye.